Hello and welcome. In today's video I will show you how to properly dockerize Nest.js application. We will create two separate images, one for development and second one for production environment. This video is not an introduction to the docker, so at least basic knowledge of a docker is required to follow along. Ok, without any further ado, let's get started. Let's start from defining the docker image for our API. I will create a file called docker file in the root directory of our project. We will create two separate images, one for development purposes and second one for production. However, there will be only one single docker file. I will use the docker's feature called multi-stage build. Basically, the multi-stage build allows us for having multiple definitions in one file. It's very convenient because we can share some logic between different images. Ok, but you may ask, why do we need two images? Isn't it enough to have just one? The answer is no. For the production build, we have to create possibly the smallest image with security in the mind, while for development purposes it's better to keep it simple. Ok, I will start defining the image from setting the variable for node image version. I will use the node version 16 and I will pick the alpine distribution. Linux Alpine is great choice. The starting image is tiny, it doesn't have any unnecessary features pre-installed, only bare minimum. Next, I will define a common step. It will be shared between dev and production builds. Each step has to start from the from clause. I will specify our base image here and I will set the name for this stage. I will name it builder. Next, I will set the working directory to be equal slash app. This is the path in the image file system where docker will run subsequent commands. Now I can copy all of the project files to the image. Two dots means that I want to copy all files from current directory to image working directory. Finally, for the common step I will run the npm install script. It's super important to install the node packages inside the container instead of copying them from the host. Depending on your operating system, npm might need to install a different version of a package than it will install inside the container. Ok, that are all steps we will share between development and the production. Now let's create a development image. For that, let's add another from clause. This time the image is based on the builder, so it will be from builder and I will name it dev. For the dev image, it's almost all. I only will specify the default command. Let's set it to be empty string. We will override it in the docker compose file. Now let's save the file and let's open the docker compose file. Underneath the adminer service I will add a new one. I will call it recipe-dev. The development image won't be hosted in any cloud, so we have to build it instead of pulling. For that let's use the build instruction. Inside it we have to specify the context first. The context is the location of docker files. In our case it's the root of the app. It's the same as for docker compose, so I have to set it as a dot. Next we have to specify the name of the docker file. Finally for our build we have to specify the target. We have to do it because we use multi-stage build and inside the docker file we have multiple targets. So the target here will be a dev. Next, we will set the working directory where the commands will be invoked. It's the same as inside the docker file. It's slash app. Going further, the app has to be in the same network as the Postgres database to communicate with it. Let's scroll to the bottom of the file and let's create a network called app. Now inside the recipe dev service, let's add the app network. Let's do the same for the Postgres and the adminer. Let's add the app network to those services. Also, we don't need the ports mapping for the Postgres service anymore. We won't connect to the database from the host machine. But there is a small issue in the logic after deleting the port mapping. Previously, we ran the migrations by invoking the script inside the terminal. Now it won't work because we removed the port mappings. To address that, I created a TypeScript file called Migration Runner. It just initializes the database connection and runs all migrations. I invoke the script during the app bootstrap, so now migrations will be run automatically. Great, moving back to docker compose file. 
I will expose the port 3000. It's necessary. It will allow us to test the endpoints from the local machine. Next, I will add the depends on close. The recipe API has to start after the database has started. Great, we are ready to specify the command. So inside the shell, I will run npm run start dev. It's our standard command for running NestJS development server. That's almost it. If you try to start the service now, it will work. But what if you change some file? Should you rebuild the whole image? That makes no sense. Instead, we will use the Docker volumes. We will bind our current directory to the app directory inside the container. Thanks for that. Anytime we will change something inside our host, it will be seen inside the container. But there are two problems we have to address. Firstly, this command tells the Docker to mount everything, node modules included. I told you that we cannot do that. So here we will do a small trick. The following line will exclude the node modules from being mounted. Now the container will use its own node modules. Great. Lastly, if you work on the Windows or Mac OS operating system, you will see noticeable delays in synchronization of host and container files. To resolve that, we will use the delegated flag on the app volume. Great, that's it. We have done the whole setup for using the Docker during the app development. Now, when you open the terminal and type docker compose app, the whole app will start in the development mode. Also, you will have the migrated database. That's awesome. Let's check if it works. Let's test the get recipe endpoint. When I click the send button, I got the 200 response and empty array. That's good. There are no recipes created yet, but maybe let's change the endpoint. Let's simply return hello world from it. When I save the file, the app is reloading. Then when I try to get the recipes once again, I got the hardcoded string. Cool, everything works as expected. Okay, half of the work done. Now let's prepare the Docker image for the production. Let's go back to the Docker file. Inside it, we will create a new build step. In fact, we will create two more steps. Building the final production ready image requires us to do some tricks. Let's call the first step prod middle step. We will build this layer from the builder layer. This means we have the all node modules installed already and all source code is copied. But in contradiction to the development, we won't run the TypeScript. We will compile it to the pure JavaScript. For that type, run npm run build. Build command simply translates TypeScript source code and saves the created JavaScript inside the dist directory. Next, we have to get rid of all dev node modules. Previously, we have installed all of them. For that, we have to use npm pran command with production flag. This will clean up our node modules. That's all what we need for this step. Finally, let's create the production layer. But inside the from clause, we won't use previous layers. Instead, we will start from the pure node image. We want to avoid including any unnecessary code in this image. Now, we will copy from the prod build layer the app dist folder. As I said, it contains only compiled JavaScript. Moreover, when copying, we will change the user. Default node image has a node user created by default. It's less privileged. It's much safer to use it. If somebody hacked into the container running on production, he wouldn't have the root access inside the container. Beside the JavaScript code, we need node modules and environment variables to start our server. I will copy them now, as previously changing the user to be equal to node. Next, I will set here the node env environment variable to be equal to production. Then I will create the entry point. The entry point specifies the command that will always be executed during the container start. So in our case, it has to be node, comma, main.js. Main.js is the file containing the startup logic. To make it work, we have to specify the working directory for the container. The code is inside the app slash dist directory, so the work dir should be set the same. Next, we have the entry point set, so there is no need for the command. I will set it to be empty string. Finally, 
I will switch the user to the node. And that's it. Our production image is ready. However, there is still room for improvement. We will add a file called .dockerignore. Basically, this tells the Docker to not copy the files listed in it. I will add the node modules directory here. This will faster the step of copying in the common step. Great, now we're ready to test the production image. For that, let's stop the running images first. To build the production image, please type docker build dash dash target prod for a production target dash t recipe dash api colon latest and finally add a dot at the end. Creating a production image will take a while, so I will accelerate the video. Again, our API needs running database to work correctly. So I will start the Postgres service by typing docker compose app Postgres. To allow the container for connecting the database, we have to place it in the same network as a database. So let's firstly search for a proper network. Let's type docker network ls. Okay. This one should be our desired network. Finally, we can run the container by typing docker run dash dash network equal to our network dash p 3000 colon 3000 for mapping ports dash it for interactive shell and finally recipe dash api as the name of the image. Great, the app has started. When I reach the recipes get endpoint, I get the hello world string. It's because I've changed the endpoint for testing purposes. Everything seems to be working correctly. Cool. So that's it for today. Our app is almost done. Great job. In the next video, I will show you how to upload pictures to the Nest.js application. Therefore, stay tuned. Meanwhile, thank you for the watching and see you next time.